Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Man, Antonelli here. Today, we're going to talk about the mental side of the game. I want to make a bunch of these videos because I think it's an extremely important part of the game and not a lot of players pay attention to it. Not a lot of players work on the mental side of the game. Most players work on the physical part of the game, right? Hitting, fielding, throwing, running. Um, and that's great. And you need that, right? It's important to work on that. But I think the mental side of the game can really, really help you take your game to the next level. And it's really important when you start to move up in levels and the talent level between players are very, very similar. What is going to be the deciding factor on whether you make a team over another player? What is a coach going to look at if the, if the physical part of the game is very, very similar between you and another player, what distinguishes you from the other player? Oftentimes, it's the mental part of the game. So today, I want to talk about a saying that you can use with your teams if you're a coach or if you're a player, just something that you can keep in mind. I've seen this posted on dugouts um, at all levels, and it's so what next pitch. So the idea behind so what next pitch is that the only pitch that matters is the one that's about to come to you, right? The pitch that just happened doesn't matter. The pitch that's going to come two or three or four pitches down the road doesn't matter. The only pitch that matters is this next pitch coming to us. That's it. So really, really good hitters, in my opinion, or really good pitchers, play the game one pitch at a time, right? And so that's the goal of every player, I think, is to be able to be totally locked in and present on that one pitch. The players that can do that the best, again, regardless of position, right? Again, whether it's you're hitting, you're pitching, you're fielding, you've got to be able to be present for that next pitch. And it sounds easy, but a lot of players have a tough time doing it. So let's just go around the infield for a minute or go around the field. Let's start in the batter's box, right? How many times have you gotten ready for an at-bat? You step in the batter's box, something bad happens. The umpire calls a bad strike on you. You swing at a pitch that's not very good. You get a good pitch and you foul it off and you say, man, I should have crushed that pitch. And you don't take the time to get rid of that pitch that you just swung and missed at, got a bad call on, um, fouled off, right? And when you get in for the next pitch, you're still thinking about that past pitch, right? And so now your mind is not in the present, and so you're not able to concentrate on that pitch. You're worried about the past pitch, and now you miss another one, or you, ch or you chase a ball, right? Now all of a sudden, I chase a ball out of the zone because I'm not locked in on that pitch, because I'm living in the past, right? It happens a lot living in the future. So you start to think about, oh, I need to get a hit here, right? Oh, I'm 0 for 3. I need to get a hit on this one, right? I got to be 1 for 4. So now you're thinking about hits that haven't even happened yet. You're thinking about the future instead of just focusing in on doing your job and getting a good pitch to hit and focusing on that one single pitch. To the pitcher's mound, same exact scenario. You, you, make, you make the best pitch of your life and the umpire calls it a ball. And you can't get over that. And so your next pitch, instead of focusing on that pitch, you're worried about the pitch that you just made that the umpire called a ball. And now you put the next pitch right down the middle that gets hit out of the park for a home run, right? Because you weren't able to separate the pitches. You weren't able to play that next pitch, right? So, uh, and let's go to the field. Same thing in the field. You may, how many times have you made an error, you've made a mistake on a ball, and you're not able to clear that mistake or that pitch that just happened. And so now the next ball that hit is hit to you, you're still thinking about the prior ball hit to you and you mess up again, you make another error, right? It's happened to me, it's happened to probably everybody, okay? And so all examples of not being able to get locked in on the present pitch, not being able to have a mindset of, so what, next pitch, move on to the next pitch, right? Get rid of the pass pitch. So a really easy saying that you can post if you're a coach, you can put it, uh, so what next pitch in your dugout somewhere in big letters so everyone can see it. Or maybe it's just a saying that you say a lot, right? So 
Um, I always, I always try to, if something happens in the game and our, our hitter, just for example, our hitter, um, you know, there's a bad call on him or he swings and misses at a ball that bounces 10 feet in front of the plate. I typically, as a coach, I'm not going to say, Hey, what, what are we doing? What are you swinging at right there? Why are you chasing that pitch? Because now I'm just making the the hitter think even more about what they just did. So typically, I'm going to say, hey, take a deep breath here. No worries. Next pitch. Right? Clear that one. So just something easy and simple like that can get the hitter or the pitcher or the fielder to be able to get back locked in on the present moment. Okay? Um, another couple of ways we've talked about in the past to kind of clear yourself. Make sure you take some time. Right? So if you do something that you don't like, let's let's stick with the example of chasing a bad pitch. Well, get out of the box for a second. Take a deep breath. Try to slow the, the game down and give yourself a second to kind of process what just happened. Let go of any emotions that, you know, are flooding your, your mind and be able to then move on to the next pitch, right? Again, what a lot of, well, a lot of times what happens to players is things start to speed up because they do something they don't want to, they didn't want to do and they don't take any time to reset. They just get right back in the box and they get angry. And now all of a sudden the game starts to speed up. Now my heart rate goes up. Now I start to sweat. And now I totally am not locked in on, the, on that next pitch that's coming in. Right? So again, real, real simple stuff, I think. But a lot of players, you know, if, again, if, if you're a player right now, you probably can think of dozens of times, maybe hundreds of times where this has happened to you. Um, and you didn't do a great job of moving past whatever it was that happened that you didn't like. Um, or again, you're thinking about the future and you're anxious about something that hasn't even occurred yet instead of locking in and doing your job on whatever the task is at hand, okay? So really be where your feet are, be present as much as you can. And this, this doesn't just relate to baseball, this is really anything. You know, this is just life in general. If you wanna feel good and not be anxious and not be worried, um, Lock in on what's happening right now and forget about all the other things that are going on in your life. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you to our patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel. We really appreciate it. And that's all we have. We'll talk to you later.